So we're asked to determine the magnitude of F, this force here, um, so that the resultant of the three forces is as small as possible. What is the magnitude of the resultant force? All right, so this is kind of an optimization problem, and what we need to do is minimize the total re or the resultant of these three forces. So we're going to start off with by working with the x and the y components. We'll start with x. And what we want to do is obtain expressions for the resultant in x, and then secondly, when we get to it, the resultant in y. Once we knew these two things, we're able to work out what the magnitude would be, um, and then we'll minimize that equation. So, summing forces in the x direction, um, we're going to have to split each of these three up into their x component and their y components. So if we go with the 14 one, it's going to have an x component like this and a y component like this. So the x part is going to be 14, it's going to be the cos of 30 degrees. And it's pointing in the negative x direction, so it's going to be a negative. If we then move on to this f force, it's going to as well have a x and a y component. The y, com oh, sorry, the x component <laughs> is going to be f, that magnitude that we're looking for, and it's going to be the adjacent side, so it's going to be cos of 45. Again, it's pointing in the negative x direction, so we're going to put a minus in there. Finally, this 8 kilonewton force is only in the x direction, so we can fairly straightforward just put plus 8 um, because it's in the positive x direction. So we know it's equal to the resultant in x. This is what we're going to need to use um, to then calculate the overall resultant, um, considering both x and y directions. So if you type um, this in a calculator, this with this, um, what you end up with is negative sorry, negative 4.124, and cos of 45 is about 0 0.707, okay, still multiplied by f, which we don't actually know. All right, so now we can repeat this for the y direction. Let's again start with the 14 kilonewtons, so it's going to be 14 sine 30, the opposite side, and it's pointing in the positive y direction, so we'll leave it as positive in the equation. Um, this one here, the F one that we're trying to determine, its Y component is going to be F sine 45, and it's pointing downwards, so it's going to be negative. This one here doesn't have any component in the Y direction, so it doesn't appear in the equation. Alright, and we can equate it to the Y part of the resultant force. So again, we can make this look a little nicer. So if you type this here in a calculator, it's just 7. And again, sine of 45 is 0 0.707 as well, multiplied by f that we don't know. So this is where we need to work out the overall resultant because this is the equation we're going to need to optimize. So we know that the resultant can be calculated by taking the square root of the x part squared and the y part squared. Okay. This time it's a little different since our x and y components are functions of this force f that we also don't know. But nonetheless, we can keep working it through. So we'll substitute this in here. And then we will substitute the y part in here. All right, so now what we need to do is minimize this equation. And to make it a little bit easier for that process, what you can do is kind of expand all this stuff inside the bracket, uh, sorry, inside the square root. Um, you don't have to, but I think it makes it a little bit easier. And I'm not gonna show that process, it's a little bit lengthy, but this is what you should end up with if you choose to do that. It just makes it a little bit nicer. So this here is the equation for FR that we need to minimize or optimize. I'll put minimize. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you can um, perform this optimization. One way is you can pretty much do it on your calculator if it's capable. Um, if it's a graphic calculator, you can plot it and then find where the minimum occurs. So I'm just going to scroll down and show you what this equation looks like when you plot it. 
So I've chosen to do it on Warframe Alpha. Um, I've used R instead of F of R in this um, thing, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and I've plotted this equation and you can see it looks like a quadratic kind of line. All right, so if we plot just our kind of part of interest, so it's basically like FR and this is F. So as you change F, you change FR and you produce a plot that looks something like this. Okay, it's quadratic. So what we need to do is find out where this minimum point actually lies in terms of the um, F and the FR values. So one way that we can do this um, is using derivatives and that's the way I'm going to choose to do it. Um, alternatively, as I said, you can also do it on your calculator. So this is just the manual way. So I'm going to come over here and perform this. So we know that FR is equal to this value, this square root, sorry. And we can also rewrite this slightly differently. Instead of having a square root symbol like this, it's the same as saying that you're raising something, in this case that crud, um, to the power of a half. So the reason I'm doing that is because it makes it a little bit easier when you go to apply the chain rule to take the derivative. So if we take the derivative with respect to f, our function inside here, or our variable inside here, remember you take the power, you multiply it by the number in front, which in our case is a 1, so a half times 1 is a half. You write out what's in the bracket, and you take one off the power. So it's going to be a half take one, which is negative a half. And then you need to multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So it's going to be, again, top multiplied by the front. So two times one, which is two. F, and then take one off the power. So two take one is one, so we'll just leave it. And again, for this one, you've got a power of one up here. So one times 4.07 gives us that and we take one of the power, um, it's just going to end up being a constant. Okay, so that represents our derivative. Now we can rewrite this a little bit cleaner if we want um, to make it, yeah, a bit nicer for a second. So our top line is just going to end up being this. This is on the bottom line since it's a fraction and remember that if you have a um, anything to the power on, in this case it's on the top line, if you flip it to the bottom line you just need to flip the sign on the power. So this can also be written as this on the bottom line. Okay, a little bit messy I know. Alright, so the trick here is we're trying to find the turning point and by taking the derivative what we've done um, is we have an equation for the gradient of of, for how this gr the gradient of this line sorry varies um, over f. So what we want to do is find where the gradient is zero, which is this point here, otherwise known as the turning point. So if we set the derivative to be equal to zero and we solve for f, it's going to give us this point on the line. So if we go ahead and do that, if we multiply this bottom line, the denominator, up to the other side, zero times the denominator is zero. So we're just left with this. And we can solve for f pretty easily now. If we flip this to the other side, it's equal to 2f. And we find that f needs to be just 2.03 approximately in kilonewtons. So that's this point on the graph. Okay, that's one of the answers that we needed. The other one that we needed to provide was what the corresponding resultant force actually is. And this is pretty easy um, now that we know the F value, so where it lies on the x-axis. We can find this just by plugging it back into our original equation. So FR is going to be the square root of when F is 2.03. Oops, sorry, this can be replaced with 2.03. Um, and this works out to be about 7.87 kilonewtons. All right, so as I said, this is just the manual way of doing it. Um, there are alternatives which are a bit easier, such as using your calculator. So if we go back, we can check our manual values against those um, easier ones that we get from the calculator. 
So this here is the plot from Warframe Alpha. We just need to determine this point um, from it. And if, again, you use Warframe Alpha, it's fairly easy. You can just use the min function. Um, and it tells us that the minimum occurs at 8.76503. Okay, and that is when f is equal to 2.035. So that's pretty much exactly the same answers as what we got. So if you were to do it this way, you could just straight away conclude at this point that fr is equal to um, 7. Point, we'll round it to 8.7 kilonewtons and it occurs when f is equal to 2 point I'd round that to 04 kilonewtons okay so there's two different ways of doing it you can see that they both end up with the same answer um, doesn't really matter which way you go about it so that's all there is for this question see you in the next one